see new comedy awards a bit later on. Brilliant. Now then, <laughs> local councils are currently looking at every opportunity to make cutbacks in their budgets, and public loos are one of those areas where some are trying to spend fewer pennies. But Lucy Siegel wants to know, without public toilets, where do you go when you've really got to go? We've all been there. Caught short, out and about, with no public loo in sight. The only option, to sneak into a pub or cafe where you've no intention of buying anything. You can brazenly stroll in and hope for the best. Hi. Sneak in and try not to be seen. Or use the old classic, pretend to be looking for someone, act as if they haven't arrived and decide to nip to the loo whilst your faux friend is on their fake way. And these techniques may well become increasingly useful. Public toilets are becoming rarer. As councils across the country struggle to make cuts, towns and cities could well be saying to loo to the public convenience. Here in Manchester, only one is set to remain and it's this one next to the town hall. Manchester Council needs to save £109 million next year. Cutting back on public toilet facilities will only save them around 295 grand. However, they say they're expensive to run for the amount they're used. But once things were different. Manchester was our first industrial city and in the late 1800s public toilets were considered vital for the health of the masses. So now, when bars and cafes are everywhere and public money isn't, do we really still need the public loo? Public toilets are vitally important in this country. We gave the world public toilets 160, 170 years ago. It's a mark of a civilised society. We have particular groups of users, parents, young children. We have ageing population. We have a whole variety of people with special needs, people that need to go to the toilet more frequently. You know, they, their needs must be satisfied. We can't all just nip into the nearest pub. So we decided to find out what problems could arise for some of the groups most affected by toilet closures by trying to use the loo without relying on the public variety. With some help from our volunteers. We've got Paddy and Pat representing the more mature toilet visitor. Josie, who uses a wheelchair, and Karen with her three-year-old daughter, Freya they've been sent into the bars and cafes of Manchester in search of a loo, with strict instructions to only ask staff if they absolutely have to. The object being to see if they can take advantage of the facilities without buying anything. When they're successful, they'll show us they were able to park themselves with the aid of one of these signs. For Josie, half the battle was getting access to places, and she wasn't helped by my pessimism. Feeling about this one, it looks too smart. But even the smart have a heart. All in all, our guinea pigs had a 100% hit rate, getting in to use the loos in every bar and cafe they went to. Perhaps it's just the trademark northern friendliness, or could it be we don't need public loos at all? But despite managing to get into places, the experiment did throw up some interesting and varied experiences. I don't feel comfortable blagging, and not only that, it's quite embarrassing if they're saying no. I wouldn't hesitate in future to call in any restaurant. It felt quite clandestine and like you were sneaking in, like you should buy something. It felt quite uncomfortable. The council in Manchester does have a scheme where businesses agree to let the public use their labs. And when night falls, there's these rather public urinals. Not for the shy or the female. But it's outside of big cities where a lack of public toilets can affect the whole local economy. Here in Audlem in Cheshire, the parish council are going to take over the running of their public toilets once the council have got them up to scratch. They're worried that if they were to go, it would affect their valuable tourist trade. So are you sort of willing, you feel so strongly about this, that you're willing to, in effect, become kind of community toilet attendants? Well, we're certainly willing to take it on, yes. I, I don't... <laughs> I don't expect him to... You're not going to stand in there. Stand in there ourselves, no, but we're, we're willing to take it on. And also, they're a bit of a, bit of a letdown at the moment to the, to the village. <laughs> um, can't you just sort of think, well, you've got a really lovely village here, you've got the canal, you know, there's lots of reasons why people would come, yeah. go to the loo before you leave, or, I don't know, can't they just use a 
hedgerow or something. Not hygienic, <laughs> is it? It's not hygienic, no. It's not very private. It's not nice, No, it's not nice. I wish I'd never suggested it. In times of cuts, when libraries, leisure centres and sadly thousands of jobs are being lost, it's easy to think that public loos are the least of our worries. But once they're gone, it might seem more than just a minor inconvenience. Right, well Patrick, do you think things are really that desperate that we need to start closing public loos now? I don't mind them closing public loos. I just think that we shouldn't then be fined for a wee in the street. <laughs> I think that's a fair trade-off. Okay. Enough. No? Possibly. Uh, anyway, we did 